Hey everyone, welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. And today, I don't know if you can see what's behind me, but I think you can figure it out. Today we're going to be talking about logic. Uh, but we're not going to get too specific about logic, so we're just going to kind of stick with the basics of it. Um, I feel like a lot of people get lost out there with logic, so we're just going to kind of keep it simple. I'm um, going to explain some things that maybe help you figure out logic here in the beginning, and then maybe down the road we'll go into some more advanced kind of logics with timers and memories and things like that. So let's get outside and I'm gonna show you some things and hopefully you can figure this out. Okay, so this is the logic gate. Uh, there are six gates that we can use in Scrap Mechanic currently. Uh, there's the AND gate, the OR gate, the exclusive OR gate, the NOT AND gate, the NOT OR gate, and the exclusive NOT OR gate. Uh, sounds like a lot. I know, it, I know it's a little confusing, but I got a little bored here that I think can might help you explain some of this and make it a little bit easier for you to understand it. All right, first things first, we're gonna look at our AND gate. And I've already kind of set up a little demo here to kind of help explain this. And, and each gate that we go through will have this same setup to kind of help you maybe understand what's changing and what's you know not changing throughout this tutorial. Uh, so as you can see, we've got our logic gate here connected to a light uh, with four switches. And with an AND gate, the easiest way to kind of think about it is it's gonna be this switch and this switch and this switch and this switch or the better way to think about it is all switches on in order to activate so let's go ahead and turn on all our switches and you can see once all the conditions are met the logic gate will light up and the light will be active or whatever you have a logic gate connected to so again this and this and this and this all have to be active for the light to work so all on or and. All right, next up we have our OR gate and this one's a little bit different. This one is kind of set up as this or this or this or this. So any of these can be turned on and the conditions we met for the light to be active or whatever you have it connected to. And it doesn't matter which ones are active as long as one of those conditions is met this or this or this or that or this or this. And that's an OR gate. All right, next comes the exclusive OR gate. And this one's a little bit different, but I think the best way to explain this would be to think about, you know how you have a room where you walk in and you have a light switch on the wall. You flip that switch, the lights come on. Then you walk across the room and you have another switch and you hit that switch and the lights go off. That's kind of how an exclusive OR gate works, or what we would call a three-way or four-way in an electrical business. So with that, each switch that is activated will remove the condition for it to be active. And don't look at the lights here. This is where an exclusive OR gate gets a little confusing when you have lights connected to the button. If it was a momentary switch, like the button that we have, or a timer or something, it would be a little bit different, but I'm just using switches for the sake of the tutorial. To disregard the lights, as, as long as there's an odd number on, the conditions will always be met. But this is just very similar to the three-way switch in your house. All right, here's where things change. Now we're at the NAND gates, or the not AND gate. Uh, what's different about this is that all the logic gates are already going through a NOT gate. And not all a NOT gate is, is just a reverse input. So with this, the input is reversed, so all things should be very similar. So instead, all off, and the condition will be met. So if all these are on, we now have conditions met to turn off the input. So it's just reverse and AND gate. So instead of this and this and this and this, it's not this and not this and not this and not. So if we were to start with all of these turned on, per se, then that any of these turned off and the condition will be met for an active logic gate. So that's an easier way to think about it rather than it already being an opposite. All right, NOR gate. So opposite and OR gate. Conditions will have it set as active when it has dropped off the lift. But as long as any of these are turned on, conditions are met to turn it off. So if all are on and a started condition, all have to be off for the condition to be met. And now that brings us to an exclusive not 
OR gate. So like our NOR gate, instead of odd numbers though, it's gonna be evens and zeros that will turn this on. So in this case, all of them turned off will activate it or any even number of switches will turn on our exclusive NOR gate. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I hope this helped out a lot. Um, I was, wasn't trying to go into too much detail and throw a lot of confusion. I was just kind of wanted to get through the basics of how these work and work with some switches. Uh, we can go into detail a little bit later on if you guys want. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you want to see some more of this and maybe some more in-depth, detailed timers, memory bits, and things like that. Uh, until then, make sure you subscribe to this channel. It does help us out a whole lot here. And until then, we will see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.